Welcome back, viewer. I hope you're all having a great day. And if you are, then I must apologize because I'm about to ruin that with another insanely hypocritical race-baiting propaganda session with Ibrahim X. Lemon. Do you believe your grandfather is racist? <laughs> Unreal. Uh, I believe he holds, holds racist tendencies and beliefs. Okay. Why do you say that? Uh, he's just a stock American Christian male. It's a uh, older, you know, that's just how they are. <laughs> a stock American Christian male who's older, apparently that's just how they are. They're just racist. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly what his grandson means by that. I mean, pe people his age tend to think everything is racist. So it, it's not like most of us who, you know, when I see somebody mistreating another person based on their skin color or discriminating against them, that, that's what I think is racist. I don't, you know, this guy might think, or, you know, saying that an entire group of people, if you say an entire group of people, there's something wrong with them based on, you know, their skin color or religion. Oh, wait, that's what he just did. <laughs> and it's actually kind of funny because didn't Don Lemon do that himself? Didn't he say that uh, the biggest threat to America is white males? Um so we have to stop demonizing people and realize the biggest terror threat in this country is white men. Mm -hmm. So we have to stop demonizing people. The biggest terror threat in this country is white men. Oh, that was different. It's uh, the conspiracies and weird, random racist things. And they say, yeah, so, and it doesn't make sense, but they're just scared. <laughs> so you can see where this is going, okay? It's just so this guy is going after the same boogeyman that the media constantly fear mongers about. You know, people that believe things that they don't agree with, people that uh, watch stations that they don't like, who happen to be both their business and ideological competitors. And it's just funny CNN playing, you know, they're really, really uh, taking it to Fox News over this Dominion lawsuit. But it's just funny because CNN lies on a regular basis. CNN had to settle a lawsuit themselves along with NBC and The Washington Post when they lied about Nick Sandman. I'm actually surprised there aren't more lawsuits because the media lies a lot. And I, I think the reason for that is because the threshold is supposed to be pretty high, right? Because you can say somebody's lying, but unless you're psychic, okay, you wouldn't know that. I mean, it comes down to some, especially when you're talking about a news agency. But not to get off into the weeds about that, let's continue. Listen, you're generalizing uh, a lot here about, you said, older Christian white males, but what do you mean by that? What do you mean they're scared? <laughs> yeah. Talk to me more, please. Yeah, he's generalizing. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, I feel like a lot of people of that generation are caught up in this 24-hour uh, news cycle of fear and paranoia perpetuated by some other news stations. And he was fully into that, sitting and watch uh, Fox News all day, every day, blaring in his living room. Okay, <laughs> but you're on CNN right now, and what are you doing? You're fear-mongering, scaring about white racists out there, Christian male racists. You're talking to Don Lemon, who said that white males are the biggest threat to this country on a network that lied uh, about things like hands up, so don't shoot, and actually incited riots, lied about the shooting in Kenosha, inciting riots, lied about... Uh, police shootings in general, uh, making it seem like way more people were being, uh, black people specifically, were being shot by police. You know, that CNN doesn't talk when a white person is shot by an officer, right? Because that doesn't, that's not part of the narrative. They don't talk when a black guy shoots his neighbors because his daughter's ball, or the daughter of his neighbor's ball went into your yard. Uh, that just happened yesterday, and that's not news anywhere. Joe Biden isn't inviting that family to, to come uh, to come see him because uh, it, it's there's no political benefit to it. That's exactly why they're milking this. That's exactly why they only care about these shootings when it conforms to a very specific narrative. So I find it a little odd that they brought this guy on CNN to crap talk Fox News. I mean, did, is that why they brought him on? Like, why bring this guy on? What's the point? What are they doing other than getting a political benefit for Democrats and attacking their business opponents their number one business opponents and i think that stuff really kind of reinforces this negative view of, of minority groups and leads people to be a little doesn't necessarily lead people to be racist but it 
reinforces and galvanizes racist people. I mean, again, I, like, what are you doing right now? That's exactly what you're doing, but you're just doing it to a different group. And I find it funny that he, he, he does appear to be mixed of some kind. And, you know, he's got to be made to reject that half of him of himself, it seems like. That's why he's on here. It's very Marxist, very Maoist revolutionary, where they bring this guy on and they're essentially shaming him unless he comports with the narrative, unless he's down with the struggle. And he's now showing that he is. He's like, my grandpa, my white grandpa is a typical white male Christian who's racist, holds racist beliefs, and is scared of minorities thanks to Fox News. I mean, this is all part of an archetype. It's a boogeyman for the media. Not to say there isn't people out there like that, but like, you know, if it were, if these situations were flipped, we'd be told it's a fringe minority. But in this case, they explode it up and exaggerate it in order to benefit maximally politically. All right, so what I have here are facts that CNN, Don Lemon, the Democrats and their state media mouthpieces want to keep from the public. They want to fear monger about the white menace and how police officers are supposedly hunting down black people, which is not true. But here's the actual data. And it's interesting because this data seems to stop in 2019. I couldn't find anything past 2019. I wonder why that is. But if you look at the race of the murder victims here, the first one we have is white. In 2019, there were a total of 3,299 white victims who were killed. Uh, 2,594 of those were killed by other white people, which when it comes to intra-racial murder tends to be the case, although it tends to be higher when it comes to black-on-black -black murder. There's a higher rate of it. I think for whites, it's somewhere around like 79%. For black people, it's around 87% uh, of black people are killed by other black people. So when it comes to... Uh, Black people being the race of the offender against white people, killing white people, there were 566 black-on-white murders in 2019. So we go down to the race of the victim black. There were a total of 2,906 murders. 246 of those were done by white people. So 246 murders of black people that were done by white people, although we don't know if those were you know, race-related, and when it comes to black people, there were 566 murders of white people. So, you know, it doesn't take a mathematician to figure out there. That's a much bigger number. There are a lot more black murders of white people than the other way around. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, it has anything to do with white people or this has anything to do with black people, their skin color or anything like that. I'm not, you know, accusing all black people of, uh, of doing this, but I'm just showing that these are the actual facts and it does not at all comport with what we see from the media. We hear a lot about racism against black people, but we don't hear so much about racism against white people or violence against white people. Uh, and, you know, you can make the argument that that's because a lot of that is incited by the media and by their narratives and by their constant, never-ending demonization of whites, uh, blaming whites for conspiracies to hold everyone else down. And I pointed out before that a lot of these anti-white conspiracy theories and tropes mirror anti-Semitic conspiracy theories and tropes. When you talk about white fragility, and white privilege you're talking about assigning traits to people on a broad scale based on nothing but their skin color and then connecting those to conspiracies to hold everybody else down so it's not surprising when you see murders like this uh, and high numbers like this because people tend to feel justified in what they're doing when all they he endlessly hear is that this group of people is horrible and responsible for everything wrong in your life all right folks i hope all right folks if you enjoyed that all right, folks, if you enjoyed that, please hit that like button, share and subscribe and make sure to leave a comment to continue the discussion. Thanks a lot and I'll see you on the next one.